Okay, so today we are going to start a new unit. This new unit is called the Manifest Destiny. We're going to have four sections. It's going to take us about three weeks to cover this unit, so it will be split by spring break. And uh, today we are going to cover section one, only half of it. Let's talk about Oregon country. It is not, I need to tell you, it is not just the state of Oregon. Oregon country encompasses the huge area beyond the Rockies. It's all of present-day Oregon, all of present-day Washington, it's all of present-day Idaho, and it also includes parts of Wyoming, parts of Montana, and goes up into Canada. So this is a huge, huge area of land, and it's beautiful. It's covered with forest, mountains, trees. It's a very beautiful, untamed land. So the people that go to this beautiful, untamed land are mountain men. Now, uh, I need you to highlight a number a couple things here. Mountain men are adventurous men who hike through Oregon's vast forests, trapping animals and living off the land. That is the definition of a mountain man, okay? So they're hiking through the forest. They're trappers. They're traders. They, they, uh, they take furs, okay? Now, how do they survive? This is where I want you to number it. They survive by number one, being tough, and number two, being resourceful. Okay? Being tough and resourceful. Are any of you guys tough and resourceful? Yes. No? Yes? All right. Let's talk about this. Why are, I want you to just kind of talk with your Taylor partner for about 30 seconds. Try to come up with maybe three reasons why a young man uh, might have gone to the wilderness by himself to become a mountain man. Quickly, about 30 seconds, maybe less. Good money. Good money. All right. Who's got some good reasons? Tell me. Let's talk about them. Why would they even go out to that wilderness by themselves? Yes. Like maybe sort of like a pride thing, like turkeys and real man to prove that these like existed. Maybe coming into manhood, trying to prove they can do it. That's good. What else? Is that all you come up with in that discussion? Come on, guys, give me something else. Would they like land? Get land? Maybe that was their only opportunity to get some land. Although I don't know that these, they necessarily, they didn't become farmers. They just lived off of the land. They could have been running from the law. They could have been running from a broken heart. They could have had that sense of adventure. There's many, many reasons why they would choose to be alone. Okay, uh, it, it would be it would be tough. Uh, you know, do do you have what it takes to to uh, be like that? You know, that would be something that. And and I mean, this is the thing. Let's go back. They have to be number one tough and number two resourceful. Okay, so a lot of people might be tough, but are you resourceful? Okay. So let's just say that here you are, um, and you're, you know, in the mountains, you fall, your hand gets hung up, and you cannot get it out from where it is stuck. And there's nobody around for miles and miles and miles. You're basically on your own. Are you going to be resourceful enough to cut off your own hand, make a tourniquet so you don't bleed to death? Are you going to be resourceful enough? Or are you going to panic? Probably panic. I'm not going to lie. If I do anything, I'm not putting it off my hand. <laughs> how many of you feel like, how many of you are prone to sit there, think things through, and, and then you'll be, you know, you, you can do it? How many of you are, are thinkers and, and you could do that? How many of you are prone to just panic? Do you really think you would be panic struck in that situation? Yes. yes. Or would you think it through? How many of you have ever, 
you know, you there's been scenarios in your mind that's like, if this happens, then I must do this. How many of you have, have had scenarios go through your mind and you kind of... Okay. I think you would surprise yourself. I really do think that you have the capability, you out there in the digital world too, would surprise yourself, okay? Um, I know that as a parent, you know, you, you try to plan for stuff. And I know that when my daughter was in first grade on spring break, she had a bicycle wreck. And uh, it was it was it was kind of scary. She was riding beside me. It wasn't like she was trying to uh, jump on something or ramp something, or she was just riding along beside me. She had a little sweatsuit on, little little sweatshirt and sweatpants, and she had a bicycle wreck. Okay, and so you know we stopped. My husband and my sister in law were kind of behind us, and um. We stopped, and I could tell by the way that she was crying that she was hurt, okay? That it wasn't just, Mommy, I, I, have, a, I have a bump or a bruise, kiss it, make it feel better. I knew that there was something that wasn't right. You could just tell from the different cry. And so I kind of, you know, I kind of looked at her, nothing, and I kind of, I rolled up the uh, leg pants of her, uh, of her little sweatpants. And her knee just looked like it had exploded. And so I just kind of turned her around, got her leaned up against me, and here comes my sister-in-law along. Because I thought, dear Lord, I have imagined this. This is not, I did not see what my brain thought I saw. You know, because you think, oh, my brain played tricks on me. But I thought, I need some verification, right? Not going to panic and freak Bethany out because it's like, oh, my gosh. So my sister-in-law, how many of you had Miss Skidmore? at Magnus Creek as your librarian. Any of y'all go to Magnus Creek? She was the meet librarian there. Tall lady, it's my sister-in-law. Anyway, and so I said, Kathy, why don't you look at Bethany's leg? And she rolled it up and then she was like, I could tell by her expression I had not imagined it and here comes my husband. Instead of me panicking and saying, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I just looked at him and I said, Go get the truck now. Make sure that you get my purse because insurance cards are in the purse because I knew we were going to the hospital. And I didn't panic. My husband didn't panic. He was calm. None of us panicked. My father-in-law came along. He didn't panic. We just were all very calm for the little first grader who, I, you know, was hurt. And then whenever when we covered it up and then whenever we got to the hospital and my husband, he, he asked me on the way, he said, he said, how bad is it? And I said, half her knee is gone. I whispered to him, you know, kind of half her knee is gone. And he just nodded his head. What I told him is what it looked like. And then we get there, and then when they uncovered it, and my husband saw it, he raised his voice at me in the hospital, and he's like, why didn't you tell me it was that bad? And I'm like, I told you, half of her knee was gone. I mean, what else was I supposed to say? And my father-in-law got us out in the hall, and he's like, you two need to calm down, and this is, they're going to put it all back together which they did. She had to be transferred to another hospital for surgery that night. But we didn't panic. We did what we needed to do. Now, later on, whenever I call my mom and dad, I'm bawling and squalling when I'm like, Bethany had a bike wreck and we got to have surgery. I mean, you know, then I kind of didn't panic. I cried. But you'd be surprised. You have something in you that will cause you to say, okay, I can't panic and I have to just be calm in this situation. You can't go running, screaming around like a chicken with its head cut off, can you? But if you were prone to this, you wouldn't have been a mountain man. Okay? You wouldn't have gone out there. You have to be resourceful. I think that there's times I could be tough. Resourceful? Never. It's never going to happen. You know, it's just never going to happen. I am not very good at, at, at building or doing anything. I would probably freeze to death trying to build a fire. So, yeah, it would not happen for me. But I wouldn't be panic struck. But you couldn't be. Okay? Now, what these trappers did was they would spend winters in Native American villages and they would learn many of their trapping skills and survival methods from the Indians. I mean, what are you going to do if you run out of food? What are you going to do if, you know, what are you going to do in these situations? What are you going to do if you, if you run and you get a scrape or if you fall down something to keep infection out? You know, are you going to have iodine with you all the time? So you would, you would learn some of these older methods on how to take care of yourself. Okay, so you would learn what worked. And they learned those from the Indians. 
Now, in their search for a new fur, they explored new territory in the West. They're the only ones brave enough to go out there. The rest of us are going to wait on civilization. Some of, there are some people today that are adventurous. For instance, you know, they want to go and they would start a colony on the moon right now if you would let them. Right? How many do you think you would be that adventurous? I don't even want to visit the moon, but I mean, there are those that would go and colonize the moon. And then you have those people that come later after a colony has been established. That might be Miss Hill. I'm, I'm still not going to the moon. I've not been impressed with the landscape of the moon. So, let's talk about this. Characteristics that might not be well suited to a mountain man or a mountain woman. What are some characteristics that wouldn't be suitable for them? How about, how many of you right here are very comfortable with your own company and you don't really have to see people? A couple of you, a few of you. How many of you are social butterflies and you want to be surrounded by friends and people all the time? Okay, so if it's a few of you. If you're a social butterfly, this might not be the life for you because you would spend days and weeks and maybe sometimes months in your own company. You would have to be comfortable with your own company. Okay? And so you would have to be kind of a loner. If you're a social butterfly, it would be very difficult for you to be out there for long periods of time. Okay? Is Miss Hill a social butterfly yeah, or is she more of a loner? Social butterfly. Nope. Not. I'm quite content to be in my house and I don't have to be around people a whole lot. Quite content to not venture out and be social. Now, my dad and my sister, on the other hand, it's not that I'm going to say they're social butterflies, but being snowed in, my dad said he was climbing the walls. I wasn't. I was quite content to just be at home. You know, some people are content. Some people are not to, to, to you know, and need all that social interaction. If you are not resourceful and handy, such as Miss Hill, I could have been comfortable with my own company, but resourceful and handy, I am not. I just probably would have perished for 